Hey everyone, it's been a while. I've been super busy with uni at the moment. Uh, I know it's no excuse, but uh, got some more videos in the works. You might also notice I've got some proper lighting and all of that, so hopefully a bit of a boost to the video quality. But today we're here to talk about a really scary topic, technical interviews. You know the kind where you sit at a whiteboard and you get given a coding question and you sit there sweating for 10 minutes not knowing how to answer the question and suddenly a flash of insight hits you and you think you're a genius because you've solved it in quadratic time and you tell the interviewer your solution and you write it out and you think you're so good and then the interviewer says, but can we do it in linear time? And you think, can I do it in linear time? And you can't do it in linear time. Well, anyway, I've been doing a lot of those kinds of interviews recently for various companies in Sydney. Um, so that's right, I might be moving from the tiny little country town of Melbourne, Australia to the slightly bigger country town of Sydney, Australia, which for some reason costs twice as much to live in. Anyway, Sydney's home to the Australian headquarters of a bunch of tech companies like Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, as well as a couple of homegrown tech darlings like Atlassian and Canva, and a few trading firms or fintech firms like um, Optiva, Acuna, and IMC. I like to think IMC stands for Infinite Money Company. Anyway, I wanted in on a piece of the action and an all expenses paid trip to Sydney for three months sounded pretty good. So I applied to a few of these companies. I'm happy to say a few months later, I passed the technical interviews for Google, Atlassian, and Optiva. And this video is about how I did that. So if you're applying for an internship role at a big tech company, or if you're currently a student who's thinking of maybe doing this next year, or even if you're applying for grad roles, or even if you have been in industry for a while and you just want to get into a big tech company, which tend to have these technical interviews, there'll be something in this video for you. Now, side note as well, um, out of the companies I've applied for, I assume you're familiar with Google, if not Google it, but there's also Atlassian, which builds Jira, Bitbucket, Trello, and a bunch of other products. And then there's also Optiva, um, which is a high frequency trading firm. All three of them would have been amazing places to work. At the end of the day, I decided to go with Atlassian. Reasons why is in another video. Yes, I rejected Google. Yes, I feel baller for doing that. Um, but yeah, there's more to the story there and I'll talk about it another time. Let's talk about interview prep. So first things first, let's talk about what the interview process with each of these companies is like. Now the process differs a bit from company to company, but by and large, there's a lot of similar themes. So I'll sort of give an illustration of what each company look like and uh, then we can sort of drill down into the, the common themes. Let's start with Atlassian. So they're huge on culture fit. So they have a lot of non-technical interviews as well, but the process basically went, if they like your CV, then you get invited to do a coding challenge. If you pass that coding challenge, then you do a coding interview. Um, and if you pass that coding interview, then you have three more interviews. One of those is a technical interview where you do a systems design question. And then the other two are culture fit interviews. So values, management, that kind of thing. For Google, for an internship position, it's a little bit different. They mostly focus on the technical side. So you submit your CV and you do this online challenge before they've even approved your CV. If they like one or both of them, then you get through to the next round where you do two technical interview questions and from that they determine if you're ready to move on to the stage where you get matched to a project um, they don't have any non-technical interviews at the intern level but at the grad level and at beyond they definitely do optiva as well they have an online coding challenge if you pass that you get through to a non-technical interview and beyond that i don't know to be honest because at that point i had accepted the internship with atlassian um, and decided uh, not to go further with optiva so what are the common threads here well two things we noticed number one is they'll usually start with an online coding challenge of some kind. Um, in those challenges, you don't get to ask someone for hints. You don't really get to um, show off your ability to explain your thoughts or anything along those lines. It's mostly about fitting those test cases and making sure everything passes. And also sometimes it's about code cleanliness because they might look at that. Um, you're also usually pretty pressed for time. Um, so that's sort of the online code challenges. And then you, after that, you have in-person interviews uh, and the in-person technical interviews focus much more on your ability to explain things. You can definitely ask for help if you need it. Although you sort of want to give a really good attempt at the question before you ask for help. Um, and um, you have sort of this opportunity to elicit requirements as well, because the questions will be often a bit more vague and you sort of sometimes need to set up your own test cases and things like that. So it's a bit more nebulous, the kinds of uh, coding questions that you do in an interview format versus the online format. Uh, but it's important to learn how to do both of those. So it should go with Without saying that the best way to practice is to do the kinds of questions that you might get in the interview. Um, these questions tend to be algorithms and data structures focused with a focus on solving problems um, efficiently and also on 
various patterns that you tend to pick up like dynamic programming and recursion um, that come up in a lot of these questions that are sort of more, more like general strategies for solving them. So practicing coding interview questions is one of the best ways to learn. In terms of specific websites and platforms to focus on, I can vouch for Algo Expert being helpful. So you wanna be a software engineer at Google? But it does cost around $100 US a year. So if you have a bit of money to spend on your learning that you're willing to invest, then that's great. I'd say go for it. If not, there are other alternatives that are almost as good that are free. Leak Code, HackerRank, Code Forces, Code Chef, Top Coder, they all accomplish the same goal and they're all pretty good. Any one of those will do the job. Personally, I've used a combination of Algo Expert, Leak Code, and Code Forces, and HackerRank has been uh, come up in some of my interviews as the platform that the interviews have been held on, especially for those online challenges. On top of that, I read the book Cracking the Coding Interview cover to cover, and that was really helpful. It's a very thorough book that gives you sort of the ins and outs of, and the why and the how of coding interviews, what they're looking for, and sort of how to approach the problems and sort of how to sort of almost schedule your time to practice and prepare for these interviews. There are also heaps of great example coding questions in there. It's probably not enough on its own. I recommend doing one of those websites I just mentioned, um, but it's definitely another great resource. The book is available for free online. If you just search on Google, basically coding, cracking the coding interview PDF, uh, it'll come up. I'm not gonna link it here, um, but you definitely find it online for free. Another free resource I really liked was Abdul Bari's YouTube channel. He's basically a uni professor who is really, really good at explaining things and he goes through lots and lots of different algorithms and data structures in detail. I've learned heaps from that channel and learning visually is a really great way to do it. So I'd recommend that as well. And another book that I thought was really good, again, it's free, is Competitive Programmer's Handbook. Um, this sort of runs through competitive programming, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, and, and what kinds of algorithms and data structures are useful for that. And there's a big overlap with coding interview style questions there. Um, it's available for free um, as a PDF online and I will link that in the description. So now let's talk about a bit more strategy. Generally speaking, in terms of solving these questions, the more you do, the better you get at it. But there's a catch because I know a lot of people who just practice and practice and practice on the easy questions and that does not teach you how to do the medium and the hard questions, which is what's gonna come up in the interviews most likely. So you need to continually sort of add on pressure each time and push up the, uh, the difficulty of the questions you're doing until you can comfortably sort of do mediums and, and do hards, even if it takes you a bit of time. You can also sort of experiment with adding time limits to uh, the problems you're solving because you will in a real situation sort of have a time limit, especially for those online questions where you may have 90 minutes to solve five questions or something like that um, for the interview. And then when the in-person interviews, what they'll often do is you'll have the first part of the question. And then if you finish that, you get to the second part and that's the opportunity to sort of impress the uh, interviewer a bit more. Um, so time is very important and, and practicing more and more means you can get quicker and quicker with them um, and practicing with sort of with a timer as you go is another really good thing to do. After solving around 100 problems on Leak Code, most people go, I'm done. Uh, personally, I'm kind of an all or nothing person. So I decided um, in for a penny, in for a pound, I may as well really focus hard on this for a few weeks at least. So you may have heard of competitive programming, um, which is basically where you solve these interview style questions um, in a timed competitive environment as part of contests. And these problems tend to be really, really difficult. So more difficult than the kinds of questions that you would get in interview. I figured if I could get to know the people who were doing this at my uni, then I would have a really good opportunity need to practice interview style questions. Um, and also just from sort of a philosophical standpoint, I have this viewpoint of if you want to learn something and learn to do something well, then a really good way to do that is to try to do something that's even harder than that. Um, and then once you can learn to do the harder thing, then the, the original thing will <laughs> seem a lot easier in comparison. So for example, if you wanna to learn to run a 5K, run a, practice running a 10K, and then the 5K will be in comparison a lot easier. If you wanna learn Java and get really good at Java, then practice C++ first, which is much more low level, and then you can practice uh, Java after that, and it'll make a bit more sense. Um, if you wanna make a million dollars, then start with a billion dollars and just make some really bad investments. So I found doing competitive programming was really useful for a number of reasons. Number one, it made the whole interview preparation process far more social. Now you're probably thinking, you know, the kinds of people who do programming problems for fun are not the most social bunch, but 
and yeah, I mean, you're right probably, um, but sitting down and, you know, working through these problems together, discussing ideas, uh, sitting the whiteboard, like solving problems. I found that really interesting and, and quite enjoyable. And it helped me sort of um, build sort of mental frameworks about how these algorithms worked a lot easier. Um, it also allowed me to, if I had a question about something, I just didn't understand how an algorithm or a data stru structure worked, I would have someone I could directly ask. Um, so that was really useful. Number two as well, um, because these problems are so much harder, um, you get exposure to a lot of algorithms and data structures can sort of spawn off other trains of thought that you, that you then go on and get sort of a mastery of the subject. So for example, have you ever heard of Kozaragi's algorithm or segment trees or the convex hull problem? And neither had I at this point, um, but becoming familiar with these, when you go into an interview and then you get some question that's like a modified knapsack or something that's a bit simpler, that's a bit more familiar, um, then, knowing that you can do these harder problems really, really helps sort of from a confidence level and also from just an understanding level of, of like your breadth of knowledge in the subject. So um, for that reason, competitive programming was really helpful for me. By the way, when I say I was doing competitive programming, I don't mean I was entering contests every second week and winning them or anything like that. It was more just like I would go along to the weekly meetups, um, I'd solve some problems in my own time, I'd discuss them with people, and then every now and again, there'd be a contest on and I would like solve a couple of problems from there and try and just understand what was going on um, and, and sort of just treat it as an opportunity to sort of get into that mindset a bit more often. So there's lots and lots of contests that get run, um, Co Google Code Jam and ICPC and uh, Facebook Hacker Cup and things like that. Um, and there's a whole community of people doing this. So if that sounds interesting to you, it could be a new hobby. Um, even if not, I think really for any software engineer, it's beneficial to get a strong understanding of algorithms and data structures. Um, so I'd recommend that as well. All right, so now I'm just gonna talk about some other things to keep in mind and just miscellaneous tips and so on. The first one's a bit of a disclaimer. The roles I was applying for were all internships. They weren't grad roles and they weren't sort of like experienced engineer roles or senior engineer roles or anything like that. Um, I'm in the second last year of my software engineering and finance degree right now. So I'm sort of in the position to go and do an internship and then uh, hopefully land a grad role at the end of next year. Um, that being said, the process is roughly the same. It's more just about the difficulty that, that, that changes. So from, from a coding interview perspective, uh, the questions that you'll get asked are, are all pretty similar. They might vary in difficulty, but they're all pretty similar. Um, from a non-technical interview perspective, things do change a bit. And from a um, so systems design and so on, and also at the sort of level of examples of impact that you've had and, and, and so on, that obviously depends on experience. But at the end of the day, most big software companies are just looking for people who are quick learners, creative problem solvers, hard workers, and easy to get along with. Um, um, so if you can hit each of those points, uh, then you'll, you'll probably not too, find it too hard to, to land a software engineering job at a big company if that is what you are looking to do. Um, solving those coding interview questions is just part of how you demonstrate that. I guess another thing to consider is that this is all advice for a specific type of interview, the coding interview. And sometimes that's not what you actually get at a company, especially at smaller companies. They might tend to ask more about the technologies they use or the business area that they're in. Um, and so obviously preparing algorithms and data structures is not going to help for that. Um, so just sort of know what you're getting into and uh, that'll obviously solve that problem. That being said, this is a very common type of interview that comes up, especially at larger companies. So it's definitely worth preparing for if that's remotely something that you're interested in doing. Final thing to keep in mind, I find it really useful to have some kind of detachment from the process. What I mean by that is I like to imagine when I'm in an interview that I'm actually just an imposter, that I'm there to um, try and answer these questions on behalf of someone else that I'm getting the job for. Like it, that at the end of the day, it doesn't really affect me whether I get it or not. Um, sort of having that level of detachment, it's not so much that it makes you like apathetic or anything like that. It's more that it actually just means that you're not emotionally attached to the outcome. And so you can just do your best job without getting distracted. And I find that's a really useful uh, sort of attitude to have. On top of that, I try to treat the process as a bit of fun, an opportunity to show what I've learned and uh, to sort of show that I know how to answer these questions and just impress the interviewer and just have a good time. Um, and sort of, if you go into, with that, into it with that attitude as well, then that also really helps. Oh, and one more thing, I think, people tend to complain a lot about these types of interviews. I'm um, saying maybe, you know, that they're not relevant to the real world or that the kinds of problems you solve day to day have nothing to do with coding interview questions. I agree to an extent, but a limited extent because I have seen people who 
um, have had extensive experience with either competitive programming or just algorithms and data structures and I have those really strong fundamentals. And then I've seen people who lack those fundamentals and the sort of work that they produce, there's a very big difference in the in the quality of the work, the level of sort of abstraction and, and repeatability of the work. And also in just some of the elegance of the solutions and the level of things that people can actually come up with. So as an example, um, I was working recently with a guy in my current job who's uh, got pretty good uh, experience with competitive programming and with, with algorithms and data structures. And he was able to sort of solve this problem we had, which was about sort of passing text um, with a really elegant solution that basically like was like recursively passing these text patterns. Um, and it looked almost like the kind of problem that you would get in a in an interview or in a um, in a uh, competitive programming contest, but he was able to solve that problem in that way. And it was actually a really elegant solution. It solved the exact problem that we had. And it was quite tricky to understand what it was doing um, and let alone like come up with it. And I think there are very few people who would have been able to do that, but because he had that experience, he was able to sort of uh, provide that. Um, so I think it's really uh, worthwhile to have at least some minimal level of proficiency in, in this area. Um, you know, if you don't understand like how a binary tree works or something like that, they come up all the time in all these different areas. So um, I'd say, you know, for that reason, it's it's worthwhile. Um, and even if I'm playing devil's advocate here and imagine there's no correlation at all between how good a programmer someone is and the amount of algorithms and data structures uh, problems and the difficulty of problems that, that they've solved. Um, there's still obviously the pragmatic argument of if you want to interview at these companies, then you'll need to be able to do that. And all the companies have a very similar interview process. So I think it's a really good thing that you can learn this sort of one skill, revise it from time to time if you need to, and you're set for tech interviews for life because you already can demonstrate those skills. So I think that's probably a lot better than, than having to sort of learn the specific things that that company is, uh, the specific tools that they're using every time you want to move companies because they just trust if you can actually solve these problems, then you can pick up other things. So I think it's probably on the, on the whole a good thing there are obviously problems with it, um, but on, on the whole, I think it probably gets complained about a bit more than it really needs to. So with all that in mind, I hope I've inspired you to go and practice. I hope the resources I've supplied are useful for you and happy coding.